Hello class, Mr. Linder here. Let's talk about the introduction to physiology. So what is physiology? Physiology is the study of how the human body and its component parts work together. It really includes an understanding of chemistry um, to really get a, a good grasp of the physical processes uh, that take place. Um, it, it really took centuries for physiologists to construct the foundational knowledge that we need uh, in order to really apply physiology uh, to what we know as modern medicine today. Uh, for example, if you take a look at this table, uh, what this table actually shows is uh, really the Nobel Prize winners uh, over the last, uh, say, 100, 110 years. Uh, and, and what's interesting, if you go back uh, a century, um, in 1900, uh, Carl Landsteiner uh, is noted for and, and received the Nobel Prize for the discovery of blood typing uh, and the blood groups, A, B, and O. Now, you might take that for granted nowadays because that seems so simple. Uh, we can do that uh, in a general biology class and you can uh, take your blood and you can type what your blood type is. And, and most people know uh, what their blood type is. But if you go back a hundred years, we were still trying to figure out uh, what blood types really were. And we didn't have a grasp of um, how you could donate blood from one person to another uh, and not actually have transfusion uh, rejections. Um, if you continue to look at this table, you'll notice that the research gets progressively uh, more advanced. Um, when you get into, say, the 1950s and 1960s, uh, you start seeing Nobel Prizes being awarded for uh, the discovery of the citric acid cycle and metabolism that takes place uh, within the body. Or you see uh, Watson and Crick's names show up uh, as you look at DNA structure. And so as we begin to uh, do more research and learn more and more about um, the molecules that make up the body and, and what their structure uh, was all about, we could then start bringing in um, genetics and proteomics and, and really start looking at um, how the human body functions uh, at a cellular and a molecular level. Uh, if you get into some of these last Nobel Prize uh, winners, uh, you'll notice that uh, in 2004, uh, it was for the olfactory system and how our olfactory receptors work. Uh, in 2006, RNA interference. So you're getting into very specific um, you know, functionality, how G proteins work and how chemical signaling works within the body. Uh, and these are all topics that we'll get into as we look uh, deeper and deeper into physiology. Uh, and, and so what we're learning uh, is that really physiology uh, is this integrative science where the systems work together. Uh, and where uh, digestion and cardiovascular and respiratory and everything uh, begins to become uh, integrated into one big uh, physiological picture. Uh, and one of the things that we figured out with physiology is that there's a lot of emergent properties that then uh, begin to grow. It's not just uh, the, the heart pumps blood uh, and the lungs are used for uh, transporting oxygen and carbon dioxide. We begin to see higher level functioning uh, as we look at these systems uh, at a much deeper level. Uh, for example, if you look at the nervous system, uh, there's intelligence, there's emotion, uh, there, there's these higher level brain functionality uh, that goes beyond just your understanding of a neuron. Uh, and so that's something to keep in mind as you study physiology, that there's these emergent properties, uh, there's this integration with systems, there's integration with cells. Uh, and so physiology is very, very complex. Uh, as you progress uh, and as you get farther along in your studies, uh, genomics is, is looking at uh, the genome, uh, proteomics is studying proteins, uh, and those are huge areas of study uh, that furthers our understanding of physiology and helps us uh, to get better at medicine because ultimately a lot of people study physiology for the purpose of getting into medicine uh, and helping people. 
Uh, and so if you look at the genome uh, and the human genome project, uh, we, we used to think that, you know, one gene codes for one protein, uh, but that turns out to, to not be true. And we'll look at this concept uh, in more detail later on. Uh, but it turns out that there are actually hundreds of thousands of proteins working within the human body, uh, even though it's estimated that there's only about 25,000 genes. Uh, so where are all these proteins coming from and what are they actually doing? Well, that's an area of research that's still going on uh, to this day. Um, as you move farther into physiology, um, it's important to understand that you need to have a good grasp of your anatomy as well. Uh, so typically I like to review uh, just the levels of organization uh, and the organ systems before we get further into uh, physiological mechanisms. Uh, so as you look at level of organization, you should understand that there's a, a chemistry aspect to uh, physiology. So studying of atoms, studying of molecules, uh, studying of cellular structure. Uh, usually any book that you pick up will have a chemistry section, it will have a cytology section, it'll have a histology section, tissues being the next level, um, just so that you can go back and review that anatomy uh, before you really try to get into um, the, the deeper physiology concepts. So chemical structure, cellular structure, and then of course the structure of tissues, uh, histology. Uh, as you move forward, uh, we know that organs are made up of tissues, organ systems are made up of multiple organs, and then of course the organism is made up of the organ systems. Now for physiology, we typically don't go too much farther. We will talk a little bit about how you know, our physiology um, and, and works within the population of our species. Uh, but as far as getting into ecology and, and looking at um, levels of organization beyond that, uh, we typically don't do that in physiology. So that's our level of organization. Uh, we also have uh, a review of organ systems. Always a good idea to go through and uh, review what is the circulatory system. You know, what, what structures make up the circulatory system? Heart, blood vessels, blood. What is its basic functionality? Transport, regulation, protection. Um, then we have digestive system. Uh, and again, corresponding structures and their representative functions endocrine system. When you hear endocrine, you should be thinking uh, hormones, pituitary gland, thyroid gland, adrenal glands. Uh, but there are also uh, other organs that are going to fit into uh, the endocrine system in terms of they produce hormones, but they'll fall into an, another system as well. For example, the heart uh, produces uh, hormones. However, it falls under the circulatory system. Uh, so you, again, integrated science kind of stuff. Um, immune system, integumentary system, musculoskeletal, nervous, reproductive, respiratory, urinary. So always uh, take the opportunity to go back and review uh, anatomical features uh, and structures uh, as you're uh, preparing to study uh, physiological things. Since um, since physiology is an integrated uh, science, uh, then it's important to look at sort of how um, a lot of books are organized. Um, and so this particular diagram just shows you that integration that we're talking about, how the circulatory system uh, would be tied to the digestive system or the respiratory system. Uh, so for example, uh, we bring in oxygen, that oxygen is transported into the circulatory system. There are circulatory uh, mechanisms for taking that oxygen out to the various uh, body systems, uh, and then using that oxygen uh, to perform uh, metabolic uh, activities. So it's that integration uh, that's so important uh, as you study physiology. Um, the way a lot of books will present topics is they use mapping techniques. Um, so this is just a generalized idea here. Uh, if we look at the idea of a sandwich, um, this is just a, a way to represent uh, how things might be presented to you in diagrams. Uh, so what kinds of things are used to, you know, make a sandwich? What, what could you use uh, as sort of the, the covering, whether it's bread, whether it's a tortilla, uh, whether it's a lettuce wrap, something like that. And then what kinds of things could you put in the sandwich? Vegetables, cheeses, meats, whatever. Um, the point is, is that 
structural and functional relationships can be presented in a mapping uh, fashion. And so you'll see that a lot in textbooks uh, when you study anatomy and when you study uh, physiology. Uh, another way to uh, represent ideas uh, in a picture form uh, is using flowcharts. Uh, so when a person gets uh, hot, uh, what does the body do in response? And okay, so when you're hot, you're losing body water through evaporation. That evaporation, though, is a cooling process. So we do that to cool ourselves down and maintain homeostasis. Uh, but if you're losing water, you're going to have to uh, consume fluids. If there's an output, then there has to be an input in order to also maintain uh, homeostatic balance. So this is a nice flow diagram to just represent sort of the process that's taking place. You lose water through evaporation, body fluids are becoming concentrated, there has to be some sort of signaling for getting thirsty, you have to drink water in order to increase that water content. And again, that gets back to this idea that we have to maintain some level of homeostasis. So how do we go about, though, describing what's taking place uh, in uh, the body, sort of in, in this um, uh, physiological uh, realm that we're talking about? Um, how do we express um, the, the physiological processes? Uh, and, and some of the things to, to think about is the function and the mechanism. Um, when we think about function, uh, we're really thinking about oftentimes uh, the why of things, and, and, and that's not necessarily how we can teach physiology. Um, when you think about why something is the way that it is, um, it may not be um, the best way to describe what's going on. For example, if you ask the question, uh, why does a red blood cell transport oxygen? Um, we may not have a good answer for that um, because it could have been that uh, white blood cells transported oxygen. Now, it turns out we know why a red blood cell carries oxygen, and, and that's because red blood cells have hemoglobin. Uh, hemoglobin is a molecule that contains iron. Iron grabs onto oxygen, uh, and therefore it's used in the transport process. Um, but asking the why question isn't always the best way to approach uh, a physiological process. Um, that's really what we call the teleological approach. So if you see the term teleological approach, what they're saying is we're thinking about why something is the way it is, maybe some adaptive significance um, for why something is the way that it is, but it's not always the best way to describe physiological events. In order to describe physiology, we usually use what's called the mechanistic approach. In the mechanistic approach, we answer how questions. So how does a red blood cell transport oxygen rather than why does it transport oxygen? And so that how does a red blood cell transport oxygen gets back to that idea of it contains hemoglobin, hemoglobin has iron, iron binds oxygen uh, from our understanding of chemistry, and that's how we then can move oxygen uh, throughout the circulatory system. So mechanistic approaches are going to be really uh, important to how we study uh, physiology. And, and when you study mechanisms, you then can apply what you've learned to medicine and to other areas uh, of research so that uh, you can study how drugs function. Uh, you can study then how to treat uh, somebody uh, that's in a, a cardiac arrhythmia and so forth and so forth. So understanding the mechanism uh, is actually really, really important. So how do we go about studying kind of the big picture of physiology rather than just looking at the mechanistic approach? Um, and oftentimes a lot of uh, people, when they look at physiology, they like to look at themes of physiology. Uh, physiology isn't just about memorizing and, and learning things. It's really about understanding the big concepts uh, as you move forward. Uh, so what are the big global uh, sort of concepts for physiology? So what I like to look at is structure and function. Uh, this diagram actually shows you uh, different uh, groups that have sort of organized uh, themes, uh, whether it's uh, physicians groups or National Science Foundation or even uh, the AP College Board. Uh, you'll notice a lot of similarity in what their themes actually are. Uh, so structure and function are closely related. Uh, so based on the structure, you can determine uh, functionality. Uh, 
Uh, living things require energy. And so we'll talk a lot about growth and metabolism. Uh, information flows uh, in physiological uh, mechanisms. So how we coordinate gene uh, transfer to produce proteins, how we get cell to cell communication, uh, those kinds of things. Uh, and then lastly, homeostasis. And we'll focus a lot on homeostasis uh, as we go through uh, our discussion of physiology. How do we maintain a constant uh, internal environment, even though the external environment changes? All right. Thanks for listening. Take care. Bye.